ADHD, short-term memory, how do we learn how to help ourselves? There are actual ways. So one of the things that I feel is an absolute superpower is my ability to forget people's names the moment that they tell me what their name is when I get introduced to them. Now, why is this? Am I bad at names? No. It's just what happens is when I say, hi, my name is Rob, and then somebody starting to do, you know, whatever the normal introduction greeting is, uh, my mind is off in 10 other places. I'm like, man, those lights are flickering over there and there's a bad smell that's coming from from over there. What's on the radio? Is that Depeche Mode or Eurasia? And ah, oh, Depeche Mode, that sounds like Ola Mode. And technically a root beer float is root beer Ola Mode. Like all that is going through my head instead of listening to what this person's name is. I will usually have to apologize and say, I'm sorry, we, my superpower is forgetting people's names. Can you tell me what your name was again? And you know, usually by the second time around, I, I can remember. How do we stop doing this? Finding this is not a sustainable pattern. It doesn't just happen with names that are being told. It's like, you know, if I need to pick something up from the store and I don't write it down, I'm gonna forget. There's any number of practical applications for short-term memory and ADHD. And quite frankly, we just have a little bit less. Now, why is that? One of the main features of ADHD is a lack of norepinephrine. That is the chemical that helps us concentrate. And we're also a little short on dopamine. So if we are not concentrating, we're gonna try to do something that will bring us some dopamine, like my little internal joke that I'm telling myself, well, I'm supposed to be listening to somebody's name. The key to all this is recognition. So I have recognized that I do that. But what are some things that can help with short-term memory and ADHD? Caffeine. I mean, there's a little bit of caffeine can go a long way. Another thing that helps if you have a diagnosis of ADHD and your healthcare provider thinks that some of the stimulant type medications that are specific for ADHD would be good for you, those can help a ton. So it can help, you know, that little kind of squeaky bathroom fan feeling that's going on inside your head. It can actually help clear that up. But one of the things that I have found that has worked the best for me is actually installing a pause patch. So what does that mean? That means when I can start to feel the little ADHD train leaving the station prematurely, I just literally say pause. Like inside my head, I just say pause. It sounds too easy to be helpful, but it is. It's unreal. I can't believe how well that has worked. One of the other things that I'll do sometimes too is if I'm starting to, you know, spin out on something, I will just, you know, say misfire. You pick the word, whatever it is, but pause is pretty easy because it actually makes me pause. And then when I pause, that actually clears things. It basically effectively serves to clear the cache of your brain browser. So now it's actually got a little bit more room to work. Things can be a little bit more effective and can't believe how well that just literally forcing myself it's just it's one additional step that's all you have to do is take one step and just say pause and then once you recognize that you need to say pause you say pause guess what the things that are happening you've actually now got the bandwidth in order to accomplish them so sometimes when you've got the short-term memory you know lost you kind of feel like dory in you know finding nemo i suffer from short-term memory loss so that's the thing with adhd brains we seem to be on the edges we either don't want to sustain a thought task or we are sticking with the same thing for so much longer than anybody ever would have guessed and also we forget to eat in the meantime also another feature of ADHD for many people is difficulty organizing you know these are features that feel a little bit like you know early onset dementia so ADHD is not dementia at all however it has a very high percentage of people who have ADHD that actually turn into having a full-blown dementia it's literally a third of people who do not have their ADD or ADHD treated that get dementia and half of the people that get dementia specifically develop Alzheimer's. And so this is a little near and dear to me because my dad has ADHD and had no idea, didn't get any treatment, didn't do anything for it. And now he's, you know, 85 years old with Alzheimer's and it started coming on late seventies and the same thing happened with my grandma. But here's the thing, nobody knew about ADHD. Like 1980 was the first time that it started to get diagnosed. And so now now we know about it, we can do something about it. Earlier in life, you start doing something about it, the better opportunity you're gonna have later. And so it's just, it's something that we need to be aware of. When you train your ADHD dragon, it is a super power. My short-term memory is now better than it's ever been. I like to do math in my head. I don't mean to do it, it just happens. When I install the little pause patch, all of a sudden now, I'm able to focus a little bit better and I'm able to get more tasks accomplished. And I'm also better able to remember people's names.
names because I've actually installed that patch and I've made a point of trying to remember people's names. I've just decided not to accept it as, oh, I've got ADHD and I'm not gonna remember the name. No, actually I've got ADHD and I'm gonna remember your name. I mean, there's no reason that we can't do both. Try the pause patch. It has helped me immensely and I hope this helps. If this is helping you like and subscribe, you know, share it. The whole point of this is to create a community where we can in a safe place, just talk about our experiences and see what's worked and try to help each other out.